Hi, uh, welcome to this talk on uh, how we're going to train machine learning agents to do uh, some absurd things using Unity 3D. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, for choosing me. I feel blessed. Um, my name is Alexander Gatsis Agarias, a little bit of a tricky last surname, but la last uh, week in uh, DevOps uh, Greece, everybody could pronounce it, so that's good. <laughs> I have, a I have a couple uh, hobbies. I like bouldering. I like tabletop gaming. I think Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Guardian, things, uh, things like that. Uh, and I'm a pretty, um, let's say, passionate gamer. Uh, any other gamers uh, here? Oh, amazing. You're really in the correct talk. I can't say that much. Any uh, hardcore gamers? I'm the only one? <laughs> No, some other people. Great. Uh, I work at a small consultancy in the Netherlands uh, called uh, J Driven in uh, Utrecht. And uh, at this uh, moment, I uh, consult at a company called Root Scanner, where we, where we offer door-to-door -door solutions for um, uh, container logistics. And that's pretty much uh, all there is to know about me. Uh, so short, first, shortly, uh, why I wanted to give this talk. Um, so, well, uh, everybody knows AI is pretty big, right? Uh, with, especially with the rise of chat, GPT, and large language models, it's becoming even more ingrained in our industry. Um, so some time ago, I decided, okay, maybe I should, you know, kind of explore this, at least try to understand the basics. Um, and then uh, I want to get into machine learning. And then, well, you know, you go to st on Stack Overflow, you start um, Googling for, well, tutorial stuff like that. And then uh, you find the, pretty much the cookie cutter tutorial is here you have a couple of pictures, train them to recognize a cat or fruit or you know, stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. But if you're a gamer, you've trained yourself over the years to need that dopamine hit every one second, otherwise you lose all interest. And for me, the dopamine hit just wasn't there with those kind of tutorials. And thankfully, I found that Unity, um, uh, a game engine, also had a machine learning package. Where, they, uh, where you could uh, uh, train game uh, well, characters or game objects using machine learning algorithms. Uh, and I want to share that knowledge because I, uh, for me it was a very nice way to get into machine learning and get started and you know, discover new things in a very visual way, which I love. All right, so machine learning in games. You all know pretty much the use cases for machine learning in everyday, day-to-day -day life. You know, image recognition, facial recognition, speech recognition. I mean, DevOps has been doing a lot of things with machine learning, uh, where all the speakers, uh, all the pictures are automatically detected on the website st and stuff like that. It's pretty amazing. Uh, but has anybody any idea what uh, the game industry is using machine learning for? And bonus points if we can do them in order. <laughs> So, anybody, any ideas? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. It's not part of this, but yes. <laughs> yeah? Oh, man, that's the second one. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, the first one, and probably uh, what a lot of people think about is uh, NPC AI. So, creating NPC or adversaries in your game uh, that reacts natural, reacts differently, and creates a fresh experience for the player all the time. So games like Planetary Annihilation, I don't know if people play, have played that game, uh, use a machine learning agent as their base AI to create fresh experience for the player. Uh, second is indeed procedural content generation. Uh, and under procedural content generation falls also adapted, adaptive difficulty. So, uh, well, who doesn't know Minecraft? Um, so Minecraft is a procedural generated world, but it has a pretty big problem. If, you're, if the seed of the random, uh, or if the seed of the random ge procedural generation algorithm sucks, then you're going to get a sucky world. And especially if you're a new player, that can, can cause some problems. That can uh, well uh, deter uh, people from playing the game. So with a machine learning algorithm, you can actually train your uh, your uh, procedural generated worlds to always fit within certain criteria, which is pretty cool. Any other ideas? Pathfinding. Pathfinding. Uh, yeah, well, that falls a little bit under MPC AI, AI so trying to find your uh, way. Uh, another one that is pretty uh, cool is player simulation. Uh, you, a lot of people probably have heard the stories of Alpha, AlphaGo, uh, the world champion in Go, beating, uh, being beaten by AIs. 
Um, some time ago, uh, anybody that knows Dota 2, the game? Anybody that knows League of Legends? Oh, this breaks my heart. Uh, so uh, OpenAI uh, from ChatGPT thing. Um, a couple of years ago, they created a Dota 2 bots, uh, which were five bots that were trained to work together and play a Dota match against the best teams in the world uh, right, uh, back then, the best uh, Dota teams. And then even managed to beat those teams in a couple of matches. So that was pretty cool uh, to see that uh, they could really simulate player behavior like that. And finally, uh, automated game testing. Uh, any Candy Crush enjoyers uh, in the audience? Oh, don't be shy. <laughs> Um, so, uh, King from Candy Crush uh, uses uh, AI uh, uh, trained uh, agents to test Candy Crush uh, and test uh, basically integ integrate, uh, do an integration test on the whole of uh, Candy Crush, which uh, of course is uh, pretty cool. So, uh, has anybody fiddled with Unity before? Unity 3D? Great, okay, a couple of people. So, for the rest, Unity is a game engine. Well, it started as a game engine, but they love to call themselves a 3D development engine because they're trying to sneak into other markets. Uh, but uh, especially on the indie market and the mobile market, they are considered a market leader. Uh, you script in C Sharp. OK, nobody's running away, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they have a built uh, once deploying anywhere principle. And this one, uh, this one works really well. I know of companies that use Unity for their traditional 2D uh, apps uh, because they can really build, uh, build ones and deploy iOS, uh, uh, smart screens, uh, smart watches, Xboxes, switches, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that is really par a powerful uh, plus point of Unity. There are some minus points, but... Um, if you want to get started with training your machine learning agents in Unity, you'll need the ML Agents package. Uh, it was developed, it, well, uh, it was released in 2017 and has been steadily being developed since then. It's all completely open source. If you Google it, you'll find the GitHub immediately. Um, it's built on top of PyTorch, and PyTorch is a very uh, well, uh, famous uh, Python library to train uh, machine, uh, to well, train agents. Uh, it supports deep reinforcement le learning algorithms and imitation learning al algorithms, and you can talk to it through a low-level Python API uh, if you really want to go into the deep nitty-gritty stuff, or uh, has a more accessible uh, entry point through the editor. And the second one is what we'll be doing today, um, uh, mostly. So if you want to get started, it's actually all pretty simple. You download Unity uh, from their website, you install Python if you haven't already, uh, then you need to install the uh, machine learning agents package from the editor. It's still in preview, so there's a checkbox there that says, hey, um, I want to be able to uh, download uh, preview packages, so you have to turn that on, and then you can find it, and this is basically Maven for Unity or NPM or uh, you call it. Uh, and then you, through pip, which is the pip package manager, the Python package manager, you install uh, the Python uh, ML agents uh, package, and then you're ready to go, pretty much. So, how does that work? Uh, we're, gonna, uh, ha we're gonna be having a learning environment, uh, which is within Unity. Uh, outside of the learning environment, we're gonna have our Python trainer, which basically hosts the algorithms, the training algorithms, and receives and sends data to Unity uh, through, the uh, through the API, and the data is gonna be arriving in what we call a communicator within uh, Unity. Then that communicator is gonna delegate the data to uh, your awesome behaviors, uh, and your awesome behaviors are going to be controlling your awesome agents. So agents are basically, uh, well, think of characters in your game that are going to be acting on uh, the decisions made by the algorithms, by the machine learning algorithms, uh, and they're going to be collecting observations. And the behavior is uh, actually what is controlling those uh, agents. Next to the communicator, you can work with inference. So this is basically uh, when you have a trained model and it's ready and you're like, okay, we can go to production with this, uh, you can um, use, uh, attach the model to the behavior and then it's going to be uh, doing exactly what it was trained to do. Or you can use heuristics and this is mostly for debugging. 
So uh, if you set up your environment and you want to check that all the collisions and all the boundaries work, then you can basically uh, use heuristics which are control inputs like WSD uh, or uh, controller input or you name it. There are two training methods that you can use, reinforcement learning and imitation learning, which I think are pretty uh, straightforward, right? Uh, reinforcement learning, uh, you punish or you reward the behavior you think is uh, uh, good or bad. And imitation learning is uh, basically you have a, a pre-recorded training set of what you think the behavior should be, and the algorithms, the algorithms are going to try to imitate that uh, behavior. And actually, a very, what hel really helped me is this is just an other way of programming the behavior for, the, for, the, for your agent. So instead of really telling them what they do, you say, uh, th this is bad or this is good, what you did. And then hopefully the algorithm will learn uh, what it's supposed to do. There are a couple of supported algorithms, um, a lot of words. Uh, proximal policy optimization for reinforcement learning, or PPO, which is a very general purpose uh, algorithm. Uh, and for reinforcement learning, you also have soft, act uh, soft actor critic, which is an off-policy algorithm, which means that it can learn from past experiences um, without necessarily having to relieve those, uh, pretty much. Uh, and in the uh, soft actor critic is very good when, you're, you, when you don't have a lot of uh, samples. Uh, you have imitation learning, which you have behavior cloning, which, well, tries to just imitate the behavior, or a generate, generative adversarial imitation learning algorithm, or a Gale, uh, which, in my opinion, is pretty cool implementation where the algorithm takes like an adversarial approach to what you have pre-recorded, and it's trying, uh, by being the nemesis, so to say, of your, well, behavior, it's trying to learn what it's supposed to do. Um, our agents are going to be making all kinds of observations in the 3D space. Um, the supported observation types from the ML agents package are vector observations, which are, well, uh, basically uh, numbers in the 3D space. Um, Visual observations, uh, which are, is literally what is my 3D camera seeing right now, and that image is fed to the Python trainers. Uh, and you can even use multiple cameras to create a sort of 3D uh, image to train upon, uh, which is pretty cool. And you have raycast observations, uh, and for the people that have no idea what raycasts are, uh, in, a, in, well, in game world, uh, in the game development world, there are just lasers that you shoot from point A to point B, and then uh, you get back what it hit on its way, uh, pretty much. Uh, because that's quite a lot, um, to, for today uh, we'll be focusing on reinforcement learning using proximal policy optimization, so like the general purpose uh, uh, algorithms and vector observations. All right, so then we want to be training our own uh, agents. Uh, hopefully we can train them to do uh, what they're supposed to do, or not. Uh, this is a very accurate uh, video, a little gif of the experience of training such agents. Because at some point it really felt like I'm trying, tra trying to, learn, to teach little kids what they're supposed to do. Um, okay, so before we get started, uh, we need to design our agents, a little bit of architecture, so to say. All the agents in the 3D world have a loop. Uh, they're going to be making an observation uh, that can be, think of positions, rotations, or any float number or decimal number uh, within your 3D, uh, 3D world. Uh, think of distances uh, or weights, uh, stuff like that. Uh, then, they, uh, based on the observation, the Python trainer is going to make a decision. Um, and you can set uh, decision periods, uh, for example, okay, every X steps I want to make a decision. Um, and then we're mostly going to be allowing them to take actions between their decisions. Then, uh, based on the decision, there's, go there's going to be an action. Uh, you have continuous actions and discrete actions. Uh, continuous actions are basically, you're telling the Python trainer, I want every frame, I want you to give me X amount of numbers. So if if you say you want three continuous actions, you're going to be getting from the Python trainer three numbers, three float numbers. And then you can assign those numbers to whatever you see fit. 
And then you have discrete actions or discrete branches, and like that you, ca you can branch your behavior. So, for example, if you want to be moving around, uh, you're going to say, I want three actions for the movement, X, Y, Z. Uh, but then I also want to be able to jump while I'm moving. Then you're going to set your discrete actions to one. And when the discrete action is to one, then you're going to jump and while moving. And then when it's zero, you, you won't be jumping, pretty much. And finally, you have your rewards, which is uh, anything between minus uh, one to one. Uh, minus one being the punishment, and one being pretty much the uh, reward. And zero is uh, neutral. All right, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing is the pirate and his treasure. Everybody, uh, everybody agrees that pirates like treasure, right? Good. Um, so we have our stigma, oh sorry, we have our pirate. Uh, and we have our treasure, and basically we want him to go to the treasure. Um, when he reaches the treasure, we're going to give him candy, so that's the reward. Uh, if he reaches the um, walls of the learning environment, we are going to be punishing, because that's not what we want. Uh, the observations we'll be making are the position of the pirate and the position of the treasure. So that is three float numbers for the position of the pirate, the three float numbers for the position of the uh, treasure. And the actions we'll be asking from the Python trainer are two numbers, one for the x-axis and one for the z-axis. The axes in Unity are flipped. You might be uh, thinking z-axis, but that's the y-axis. What are you talking about? But the y-axis is actually the up axis uh, within Unity. All right. So, oh, uh, spoiler. Ah. All right. So this is our learning environment within Unity. I hope everything is visible because I cannot zoom in in Unity, unfortunately. Um, you have, um, he, this is our pirate, looks uh, almost like Jack Sparrow. Um, so we have our behavior parameters over here and here you can see a vector observation space size six. So we're saying, okay, I'm gonna be feeding you six numbers. Uh, so the position of the pirate, and the position of the treasure, two times three is six. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to be making some actions. Uh, so on the X and Z, two numbers uh, we'll be asking for the path train. And that's pretty much what is uh, important for now. So if we take a look at the code, actually implementing these agents is pretty uh, easy. I know C sharp code, but bear with me. Uh, so all you need to do is uh, inherit from the agent class that you get from the package. And then you need to start overriding a couple of methods. So the first one is um, on action uh, re received. So what do you want to do when you receive an action? Uh, and in this case, uh, we are mapping the numbers to the movement on the x uh, axis and the movement on the z axis and uh, moving. Then uh, you, need to, you want to override the collect observations uh, method. Uh, and here we say, okay, uh, the observations we'll be making are the local position of the pirate and the treasure. Then on episode uh, begin, uh, so what do you want to do when the episode starts, when the learning episode starts? And in this case, uh, we are randomizing the positions of the pirate and the treasure. Any, can anybody guess why we are randomizing the positions of the treasure and the pirate? Yeah, I, you're so smart. I wish I thought of that when I started. <laughs> so yeah, when, when I started, I just put them left, right, and then it was done. It was done learning within like two minutes, and was like, whoa! Was it, why do they need GPUs for this? It's, it's amazing. Uh, and then I moved the treasure, and it just was continuously going to the wall behind the treasure. It was like, hmm, interesting. But uh, yeah, so that is something uh, that you wanna. Uh, uh, mitigate, and then finally we have an on-trigger on on enter uh, Unity event, which is basically raised, it's an event that is being raised when two physics bodies uh, touch each other within uh, Unity. Uh, if the other uh, physics body uh, is the goal, so the treasure, uh, we are giving candy a reward of one, uh, and we end the episode, thus starting again, and if the other is a wall, we are punishing by minus one and uh, ending the episode. All right, so then we can go to our uh, ML agents learn, uh, run id uh, yar har. 
something like that. And then, uh, like this, we can start our Python trainer. As you can see now, it started and is waiting for you to give input from uh, Unity, or basically start the learning environment. Then you can press play, and as you can see, there we go. It is being trained right now. So we're getting the actions, we are uh, giving the observations, and the pirate is going all kinds of places. Basically, until at some point it randomly hits the treasure, it's like, hey, I did something good there. Uh, but yeah, like this, it will take some time until it's fully trained, right? Uh, thankfully, we can speed things up. Uh, let me stop this again. All right. Um, by, uh, well, going a little bit into Black Mirror territory, we can copy our learning environment. <laughs> and if you uh, paid attention, uh, you, you noticed the observations, everything that we give the Python trainer, are local, local positions. And what that means, there are positions relative to your parent. So you basically you have one parent object, and we are teaching the Python trainers to, uh, to react to the positions uh, relative to that parent. Because if they were going to uh, react to the positions relative to the world axis, or the whole world, they would be starting, they, they would walk to other learning environments, to other treasure chests, and it would be quite tricky. But then we can. Uh, basically go like this, press resume, and then it's going to start learning again. And then we can press play again. And here you have all, the, all these pirates trapped in all eternity trying to find the treasure. <laughs> uh, at some point you'll see there's a little bit of a hang. Uh, that is basically Unity sending all kinds of data to the Python trainer and receiving all kinds of data from the Python trainer. So uh, yeah, and as you can see, there are a couple of rugs that are turning green, and that means uh, that some debug I added for to see, okay, is it working? Another way to see if it's working is here. You can see that the mean reward of this uh, training session at this point is minus 0 0.7, and then after some time, um, this should become lower or become uh, getting closer to one. And as you can see here already, after uh, 35 seconds, it's already at minus 0 0.3. So if we would have kept this for another five minutes, so it would probably reach one. All right, so let me stop this again. Uh, yeah, so then we can turn this off. And then at some point, you are all done with the training. Your mean reward is a perfect one. You are happy. Uh, then you can go to your results, to your YAR HAR folder, and here you see um, and .o and an .x file, uh, which is an open neural network exchange file, and that you can basically attach that to your pirate agent. And here you can see it's attached to the pirate agent. And now, we, if we press play without having uh, the Python trainer uh, started, he should should. There we go. Reach the treasure. <laughs> it's uh, with absolute determination, moves to treasure, it grabs it, and then again and again and again. <laughs> so yeah, so it's pretty easy like this to train a, um, uh, well, a 3D object or character to do something, right? Um, as you can see, he's a little bit flaky, a little bit shaky, uh, likes to dance on his way. Well. I said, okay, well, pirates are drunk, so this makes sense. <laughs> uh, but if you want him to really just go in a straight line, then you probably have to think about, okay, um, maybe I want to just um, reward uh, time. Uh, I also want to reward how fast he went to the treasure, or uh, the least distance traveled uh, when going to the treasure, uh, stuff like that. All right. So, that was, uh, well, the uh, first, most simple um, version. Um, hopefully, again, all everybody can agree that cool people do not look at explosions, right? Um, and uh, I personally make it uh, my quest, so to say, to always incorporate an, incorporate an explosion in one of my, uh, in my presentations. So this is this. Um, so we have a cool person. Uh, and we're going to be spawning a barrel. 
and that barrel after five seconds is going to go boom. Uh, if we are looking at the barrel at that time, we are going to uh, punish. Uh, if the barrel explodes and we're looking the other way, we're going to reward. So pretty simple, right? Um, the observations we'll be making are the position, and this time also the rotation of the person, of the uh, agent, and the position of the barrel. Uh, and these are 10 uh, observations in total, so three for the position of the uh, agent, three for the position of the barrel, and four for the rotation of the agent, because uh, rotations are stored in quaternions in Unity. Uh, anybody worked with quaternions before? This, uh, my condolences. <laughs> Is uh, hell on earth, do not do it, it's, uh, stay away, just uh, my personal opinion. Um, and the actions we'll be uh, uh, getting are basically the uh, one float number on the, for the uh, y-axis. Uh, so our agent is always going to be moving forward and we'll be getting one uh, number which will be rotating uh, the agent around. All right. All right. So... So this is our learning environment. Uh, so we have a little island where uh, barrels are going to be spawning. Uh, I think we can immediately just start training, just to show you. Um, how about uh, boom, boom, boom? Yeah. Right. So we can press play. As you can see, uh, she's so cool, she's walking on water. <laughs> uh, so yeah, as you can see, uh, we have some debug to see if she was being cool or not, and then the explosions every five seconds. Uh, and then, yeah, well, this uh, will go on uh, and on and on. So, uh, yeah, so let me stop this again. Uh, if you look at our agent, uh, so again, huh? we have uh, ten. Uh, we're making ten uh, observations, and we're asking for one action, just uh, like I explained. Uh, and that's about it. And then, if you look at the code for her, uh, we, when we get an action, basically we rotate the agent based on the number we're getting. Um, we collect all the observations, so uh, the position, the local position, very important, of the. Um, uh, and rotation of the agent and the barrel. Um, and then every time the episode begins, we spawn the barrel uh, on a random position. And after five seconds, uh, it explodes. And then we basically calculate the dot product between the agent and the barrel. So if the agent is directly looking into to the barrel, uh, the dot product is going to be one and we flip it because we want it to be minus one as punishment. And if the agent is directly looking away, it's, it's, it would be minus one and you flip it to one. So that's pretty much it. And that was also the number you saw uh, underneath uh, the screen. The, that was the dot product. And then uh, we end the episode and we go, uh, uh, we go again. And of course, uh, you could speed it up by having a lot of cool people, uh, person, uh, per people, uh, do not, not look in explosions. And then finally, the end product would be something like this. Oh, the other way. No, what? <laughs> there we go. Uh, so a warm up. Uh, <laughs> Or uh, maybe uh, somehow train my agents to know when I'm giving the live demo, and then they're like, ah, I'm going to do one wrong, just, uh, just for uh, giggles. But uh, yeah, as you can see, mostly <laughs> she looks away. So now she should turn around slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Very slowly. Um, yeah, so an issue here, of course, is uh, she's walking on water, and not necessarily uh, ideal. So you could, again, how you could punish. Um, <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you could punish uh, this kind of behavior as unacceptable. Um, 
but yeah, it's uh, again, the working with rotations also works pretty well uh, with the uh, agent. Uh, all right, so now we, until now we've been training one agent to do one thing. Um, so what if we want to do something else with multiple agents? Uh, well, uh, so then I thought, well, how about Quidditch? Quidditch is a cool sport. Uh, well, coincidentally, we are in the UK, uh, which is your national sport, I think, or something. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're gonna have uh, a wizard on the broom and the snitch. Anybody that doesn't know Quidditch, it's... okay, you're just making sure here. Um, we're gonna have a wizard and a snitch, um, and the wizard is trying to catch the snitch, and the snitch is trying and trying to bail, pretty much. If the wizard uh, manages to catch the snitch, uh, we reward. Um, if the snitch manages to survive long enough for, for, for the snitch's basically survival game. Uh, we reward the snitch and we punish the wizards. Um, uh, and then if any of them moves out of the uh, Quidditch field, we punish. Um, and this is a little bit simplified. Uh, this was the first uh, idea, but for, uh, eventually only if the snitch moves uh, away from the field, we punish the snitch because the wizards go behind the snitch, so you don't need, they don't need to be learning this as well. Um, the observations we were making are, uh, for the wizards, uh, the position of the wizard, uh, the position of the snitch, and the distance between the two. So we are uh, always giving a small reward to the wizards when they get closer to the snitch, and a small punishment when they get further away from the snitch. So they, they learn that, okay, I need to be closer to this thing. Uh, and the snitch is basically going to be doing the same, but uh, in reverse. And the snitch is then also responsible for knowing where the boundaries of the world are, so not to fly out. And then the actions are for both uh, the same, uh, but this time uh, also on the i-axis, because, well, uh, Quidditch also goes up in the air. Um, so X, I, Z, so uh, each of them will have three uh, actions we'll be requesting. Oh, come on. The spoilers. Uh, all, right, so. oh, all right, so this is our beautiful Quidditch field. Uh, I know, I know, it looks just from the, uh, like the movies. No, I do not work for uh, Warner, uh, Warner Bros. Um, so we have uh, our red wizard and our uh, green uh, wizard, Gryffindor and Slytherin, uh, you could say. Um, and if you look at the code, uh, or, or first, if you look at the agents, you're going to see we have the witch and the wizard, uh, and they ha have basically the same uh, behavior attached to them. So they are, regarding to the Python trainer, they are the same entity. So they are being, being taught the same things. And uh, so uh, seven observations uh, with a distance, and then three actions uh, that we're asking. And then, of course, we are also have the snitch, uh, which is a bit lower. Here we go. Uh, 29 observa uh, observations, and well, three are its position, then the distance, and, the uh, and uh, three times two for the position of the, both the wizards, and then all the walls that are, I've put around the environment. Um, and then we have uh, the actions moving XIZ. All right, so. Um, and basically, uh, when we start, we do not randomize positions. Uh, this might be important later. <laughs> um, so yeah, we move them basically on X, Y, Z, so they are flying around. Um, and then we set, uh, every time we get closer, we give the wizards a little bit of a reward, a very small reward, so that they know, okay, getting closer to the snitch is exactly what I want to be doing. Um, then we collect all the observations again, huh? Uh, and then we set the current distance, so we can give the reward. Um, and then heuristics, and then if you hit the wall, we punish. Uh, but this shouldn't happen too much for the wizards. Uh, and then if you hit anything, uh, we give a small uh, punishment as well. So we don't want to we don't want to them be to be bumping in each other too much, because it's a fair game. It's fair Quidditch. Um, or hit the loops uh, that are in the world. And then, 
if you hit the snitch as a wizard, uh, well, some, uh, for, the, the de for the debugging, you'll see in a bit, if you're the witch, we add to a point to Gryffindor. If you're, if you're green, we add a point to Slytherin. And then we give a reward uh, of one. And then we also end the episode on the snitch. And that is very important, that the snitch needs to know that its episode or its training episode has also ended. And then we end the episode for the agents. And then the snitch agent uh, is pretty much very similar. Uh, this is what its, uh, its big reward. So uh, the, ma the max step is at 10,000. That's roughly two minutes, uh, I believe, from the top of my head. Um, so when it reaches uh, its max step and it hasn't been caught yet, then we give it a big reward. So it knows that this is what it's supposed to be doing. And then every time it flies further away from the wizards, we give him uh, a small reward. And then we collect the observations, set the rewards. Pretty uh, standard stuff, right? All right. Um, your uh, wizard, Harry? That's what they told him, right? All right. And as you can see, chaos. Yeah, so uh, it, it goes very fast. Um, the machine learning, uh, well, Unity, the package, the machine learning package is speeding up the whole world so that the training happens quicker because it would, if, if it was real time, it would be very slow. Uh, so that's nice. And as you can see here is the snitch just f immediately basically flies off bounds and the episode is reset over and over and over again. Uh, which is not ideal, uh, you could see. Oh, so, yeah. Stop this again, all right. Uh, of course, to speed this up, uh, I did the Black Mirror uh, thing. Uh, well, I don't, I, I don't think I need to show it again, uh, what's happening. Uh, and eventually, after, well, I think this took almost 12 to 14 hours to train to a point where I was like, yeah, I think I can show this in front of an audience. Uh, then you're going to have El Clasico, the biggest match you've seen the past 10 minutes. Gryffindor versus Slytherin. Look how they're flying behind. And who's going to grab it? Who is it going to be? Look at them going. And it was Gryffindor. One point for Gryffindor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, it's not always Gryffindor, uh, so here you can see it's Slytherin, but there is a pattern, <laughs> and maybe you've already noticed it. The snitch always flies to the top uh, right corner, uh, pretty much. Um, and that is, can, can anybody guess why, that, why, why, why is that the case? It, I didn't randomize the starting positions, uh, yeah. So somehow it, it was like, yeah, if I go there first, uh, I'll survive, I survive the longest. Now, um, an other thing I had to do here is to nerf uh, the, the snitch, uh, because at the beginning they all had the same uh, speed and turn rate and everything, uh, and they were never catching the snitch. They were so bad, holy. Uh, so eventually I had to make the snitch slightly slower. It's like 0 0.5 uh, meters per second slower or something like that. Um, so that they can catch it. And then they was, were actually starting to catch a snitch. So yes, that's a little bit of cheating, I, I know, uh, because uh, in the real game, the snitch is m much faster, I think. And uh, of course, I did the line so I could see what was happening. Uh, but yeah, it is nice to see that you can basically add as many uh, agents you want in your learning environment. And the Python trainers or the uh, machine learning agents package will train those agents. It does have an uh, effect on how quickly they learn, uh, because yeah, this again took like 12 to 13 uh, uh, hours. And uh, well, Slytherin is the undenied uh, winner, I would say. All right. So, uh, but what if we want to do things not with uh, positions? What if we want to be dodging bullets the Matrix style? Everybody seen the first Matrix? Oh, good. Everybody seen the last Matrix? 
<laughs> my condolences. Uh, so uh, we're going to have Neo and Agent Smith. Um, not uh, for copyright uh, reasons, not as they are in the movies. Uh, I do not own Keanu Reeves or... Uh, uh, what is his name? Agent Smith? Yeah, thank you. Uh, if uh, Agent Smith is sh is sh is shoots a bullet and it uh, hits our agent, uh, we're going to give a punishment, an extra punishment on top of being shot. Um, if he uh, manages to dodge uh, like this, <laughs> pretty much, uh, we are going to be giving uh, candy because that is exactly what we want. Uh, when it comes to observations, first uh, we're going to be observing the position of the bullet so that our agent knows where the, bullet, where the bullet is and the position of the nozzle so we kind of know how we are aiming. And then uh, when it comes to our agent, we're, begun, we're going to be doing 182 observations in total. And we're going to be observing anything uh, regarding the body. So the joints, the rotations of the joints, the rotations of the neck, the hips, uh, and how, many, how much strain is on, the, on that body, uh, on the body part or on the joint. Um, finally, we'll also be going to be doing some actions, uh, and we are be going to be controlling the joints pretty much of the um, agent. Uh, so we're going to be controlling how much uh, strength or how much uh, rotation we give to certain joints so that they are moving around. Uh, and for the game enthusiasts under us, uh, you might have already guessed it, but we are basically have, we are having a ragdoll, a physics ragdoll that we're trying to teach, <laughs> that we're trying to teach how to stand and how to dodge the bullets. So it's a completely physics-controlled uh, character. So we're not, we're not doing anything uh, manually on that regard. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, where is here we go? So this is our so uh, the learning environment is pretty uh, well. It's the first one, but uh, with different agents in it. Um, if you look at if we qu quickly look at the code uh, for our uh, I don't have it open. Let me open it up. So we have you know uh, there we go. All right, so here basically we hold a reference to all the body parts that we think are relevant. Um, and then uh, every time we start the episode, we are resetting the body parts, so he's standing at the position where he's starting. And then we collect the shitloads of observations that uh, I said we were going to be collecting. I won't go through all of them because it's quite, uh, quite much. And then uh, whenever we get actions, uh, we are basically setting the joint rotations uh, uh, based on those actions. And then uh, what is... Um, we are trying first, we're going to be trying to teach our agent to stand. So he first has to learn how to stand so, can he, so that he can learn how to fall. Ain't that poetic? Uh, yeah, so first he needs to learn, okay, I need to be able to stand and then I need to be able to do the crazy thing Neo did in the Matrix. Uh, so we are punishing when he falls over, when a body part that isn't his feet or his hands touch the ground, uh, we are punishing him and we're restarting the episode. All right, well, that looks uh, something like this. Um, take the red pill. That's the good one, right? The red one? Yeah. It depends. Yeah, we are at the sulfur conference. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right, so then this happens. It's uh, the best rave party you've been at, uh, I would say. <laughs> so yeah, you can see him. Uh, he's basically immediately falling over. I can slow this down a bit for uh, purposes. I mean, uh, the cape is beautifully wavy. I can say that much. Uh, but yeah, so before the... Uh, before the bullet even gets near him, he is already getting punished because something is touching the ground that is not supposed to touch the ground. Um, after a lot, and I mean a lot of hours of training, 
Who would have thought? But learning how to stand is quite tricky. Um, you'll get something like this. <laughs> that mother... <laughs> so, okay, can somebody guess what I did wrong here? No, 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 she, she's moving uh, a little bit. Uh, not much, so she has like a target area that she's allowed to hit, like uh, this. I allow the hands. And it was like, hands are free game, okay, let's go. <laughs> and the, another thing that was a little bit uh, well, wrong by design here is that I didn't account for the fact that the movement Neo is doing in the Matrix is not necessarily uh, possible movement for the human body, right? <laughs> so I was monitoring the constraints of, the, of all the joints, but after well, 20 hours or 25 hours of training the model, um, realizing that oh, the constraints are based on what the real body can do and not necessarily what Neo can do, and he's the one and he can do so much more, and yeah. But yeah, so uh, if you change it, basically, probably the lower back is one of the constraints you want to be changing a lot here, uh, or allowing to bear much more weight uh, and removing the, the hand and punishing the hands, then you could probably get pretty close to what Neo is doing. But this is also very cool, right? It's, uh, I could look at it all day. <laughs> all right. And then I've... A last one for you, uh, quickly. Um, I am a metal head. I really like heavy metal. I don't know if there are other people that like heavy metal in the... Amazing. Uh, so I was like... Uh, and this was also a little bit in the corona pandemic, and I was re really, you know, missing the, the mosh pits and everything. So I was like, you know, I'll just create my own. I'll make my own friends and everything. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, totally not creepy, uh, right? Uh, so... Um, I decided to train agents to headbang, as if they were in a mosh pit. So here we are training agents to react to the music they are uh, hearing, and basically we are tra translating the BPM and certain frequencies of the music to, well, float numbers, to observations for the agents, uh, and then based on those observations they are moving their heads. Uh, and it looks something uh, like this. For the non-metal fans, I'm sorry, but you'll have to bear with me. All right, so you see the nice spectrum visualization on the back that shows a little bit what the frequ frequencies are. Uh, and even the lights are reactive to the music, so it's uh, a little added bonus for you guys. And as you can uh, see, when the music gets uh, well, well, kind of slow, uh, not really metal enough, um, <laughs> they don't know what they're doing, <laughs> so they're very slow, you know, it's uh, like nothing, not a lot to mosh to, but when the metal starts kicking in, they're headbanging perfectly in unison. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, so, and this is how I survived the corona pandemic. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was all I had for you guys uh, today. I hope you learned something. I hope uh, you got inspired to maybe go and try these things uh, at home. And who knows, maybe you'll be the next ones to revolutionize the game industry with your uh, machine learning implementations. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, we have two minutes left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you.